So the first thing we're going to look at is what is it trying to accomplish? We're going to overview the different options available, we'll try to do a little demo. We'll get a little deeper into the, the suite solutions bundle. So I always like to look at what, what what's the bundle trying to do. You've got the reality of uh, operations versus what finance or accounting wants. So we've got a vendor, they send a bill to one entity or a business segment. It might be a back office, it might be something like that. Mm -hmm. And AP wants to be able to have a normal check run. You just write one check to the vendor. The vendor's not expecting to see it different bills entered in different places. It's just one transaction from the vendor's point of view. And usually AP or operations wants to sort of reflect that. Uh, the problem is finance or accounting wants the ledger to be correct and you want to have exact classifications. You know, If this is supposed to be divided against different departments or different subsidiaries, they want to have the classify correctly without having to do a whole month end process to with journal entries all over the place. And you know, they want it to be clean and, and, and neat and not have to do a whole, every every month have to do a whole process to reallocate things. The other, other problems are you've got cross subsidiary restrictions. The only way to enter a transaction in NetSuite and have it hit different subsidiaries is intercompany journal entries, right? A native transaction normally can't cross subsidiary boundaries. So this bundle tries to improve on that. And then also, of course, automation. You don't wanna have manual data entry you want to somehow create a template that can be used on, you know, every month you get a bill for rent, for example, and you want to just set a template up so that it'll allocate it based on different rules that you specify. I want 10% to go to manufacturing department. I want 60% to go to some other department, that sort of thing. So now we've got, well, what are the options to solve it? Well, obviously we've got this one, the one that is addressing this, which is the shared vendor bill. That's the second bullet point. Um, but you've also got the native allocation schedules which comes with, if you turn on advanced accounting, you get that part of the account. Uh, just a couple of points on the on the bundle. It's unmanaged, which means it's, it's not up, gonna be updated regularly. I found the documentation mediocre at best. There's moderate effort to needed to set it up. You gotta get the custom preferences right. And I also noticed there seem to be some minor defects. Okay, now let's, let's first look at the, the first option, which comes natively, which is the allocation schedule. What does that do? So what that does, it's a tool to automate recurring journal entries based on a template. So a record where you have the rules, you're allocating balances in, uh, in jail accounts to different dimensions. You can allocate them to different classes, locations, department, custom segments, or intercompany if you want to reallocate things to subsidiaries. You can use a contra account rather than hit the source account. I think it's very good flexibility. Um, and, and a really nice feature of this is that the rules can be fixed or dynamic. Fixed means it can be by amount. You can always say, Every month, $100 goes to Department X. It can be percentage, which is also fixed. You can say 10% every month goes to a department. Or it can be dynamic based on statistical journal entries, which I found very powerful. So you can say um, statistical journal entries are things where they're the non-financial impact, but it's a way of recording in NetSuite other parts of the business that are valuable. So headcount, right? How many employees are in each department? And then based on those statistical journal entries, you can create allocation rules. So you can say, depending on the number of employees in whatever department it is, that is gonna determine what percentage of an expense gets allocated to that department or that subsidiary. Here is an allocation schedule. Let's look at a real one that I created already. Now, again, this is contextually, we're just talking about going cross subsidiary for a vendor bill, because that's the context of this conversation. Exactly, yeah. I mean, allocation schedules can do more than just, it's not based on a vendor bill, it can be any any account. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, and it can also, it doesn't have to be cross subsidiary, it can be cross just other classifications. This one is uh, dynamic allocation. You've got, at the top, you've got your basic information. Okay, well, uh, the, the name, the word subsidiary applies to, and this would be the source subsidiary. How frequently you want this to happen, what the next date is gonna occur, what the subsequent date, and then number of minutes, that sort of thing. It's, and then you've got here dynamic allocation. You tell it the weight source, okay? And that is a statistical account. So this one is intercompany allocation. Okay, so you've got the source subsidiaries here. Mm -hmm. You have to specify an intercompany account. Mm -hmm. And then you've got which account you want to target and you can put in any dimension you want in there as well. And then the destination you're telling it, okay, how do you want it spread? Here I used fixed allocation with these are percentages. Mm -hmm. And then it creates intercompany journal entries. You did see, you did see that it would. Yeah. It would actually craft a different kind of journal entry when that crossed the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that creates an intercompany journal entry. I think the point is that you can achieve the same uh, similar or the same result that the event shared vendor bills 
approach is trying to do mm -hmm. using allocation schedules. Let's, let's look at the shared vendor bills tool. Similar to allocation schedules, it uses predefined distribution schedules. You just kind of set up a template that mm -hmm. tell it how you want it allocated. The allocation is visible itself on the bill. What, this is the main, I think one of the main advantages over the other tool where mm -hmm. you look at the bill and you've got a sub tab that shows you how it will be distributed. Which is, okay. which is, which is probably more your orientation because as you enter the bill, you want to understand its coding of what yeah. you want, its intended destination, correct? Yeah, it can do intercompany distribution across subsidiaries or intra-company across other dimensions if you want to just reclassify it to different departments or classes. Um, it'll automate a journal entry or intercompany journal entry for the allocations. When the bill is approved, it then generates these journal entries or intercompany journal entries based on the schedule. So it's also using journal entries. You see it from the bill. You see how that how the allocation is working. It's got a link to the journal entries once they're created. It allows percentage or amount allocation. Okay. Okay, and it's driven by the transaction rather than the account. Again, it's obvious, mm -hmm. but you know, there it was worth mentioning that the allocation schedule tool is based on a GL account on a mm -hmm. balance at the end of the month. Here, it's driven by specific transactions. That's a big difference, and that's that yeah. orientation might be critical in the in the decision making. And then it, you know, it maintains journal entry and bill loyalty, which is great. In other words, if you change the bill or the distribution schedule from the bill. The existing journal entries are voided and new ones are created. Wow, really? It goes so you've that got far? that fidelity. Yeah. It actually voids them. Yeah. So the way to set it up is it's under lists, custom, SVB, shared vendor bill, bill distribution schedule. Let's look Let's look at an intercompany one as well here. Okay. So this one, we've got, um, you give it a name, you tell it the source subsidiary. This field is calculated. You don't check that. That NetSuite does that for you. Tell it it's amount-based distribution. It's not percentages. It's how much on every bill you would tell it what amount you want to allocate. Oh, is this is um, this the template or am I in a bill? Where am I right this now? Is Sorry, this is a template. This is a template. This distribute tax distribute taxes looks more useful than it actually is. It's meant to be able to allocate the taxes as well. The problem is U.S.-based taxes nexuses are not supported. Then down here, you've got the different lines. So the lines will tell you how it's going to be allocated. So let's just enter a new one. Okay, this is intercompany. So you've got to give it a intercompany AR account, set up a customer that represents a subsidiary. But this tool only works if you've got that set up. Then you tell it where you want it to hit. So this is the destination. Okay, and then on, on each individual bill, you'll then define uh, of this bill, what is the amount that's going to be allocated. There's a system-wide preference where you tell it if there is if there are mandatory destination dimensions. You know, let's let's try saving this. It's it's giving us destination subsidiaries. And now again, we didn't we didn't tell them the weights or anything. We didn't tell them how it should allocate it. All we've told them is where it's going. Because that's something that you define at, at the level of the bill. So let's now let's look at a bill. Let's enter a new one. So we can see the whole process, how you how you tell it which schedule to use. Okay, I'm going to enter bill, give it a vendor. In the custom form, you tell it, you've got to specify a shared vendor bill form. When I selected a shared vendor bill form, I got all these uh, extra fields here. Now I tell it which schedule, so which template it's going to use. Mm. It, it seems like it needs to know how it's going to allocate the expense mm -hmm. before it posts to the ledger. Let's say we've got an, a bill for office rent or something. And the amount, let's say we got a bill for $5,000. Uh, amortization schedules don't work with it. Yep. Can't we're combine right. the two things. If let's say I've got a bill with a lot of different lines, I can see exclude this line from the allocation, from the uh, distribution. And now we're going to save it. Okay. And now there's a process that's going on in the background. Yeah, okay. So it's it's doing the work behind the scenes. Okay. And now it's here's our thing. Did create a status complete. Okay. So it should be good. No errors. Okay. And now let's go back to our bill. And now we've got this tab, bill distribution details. Okay. So let's look at that. Okay. And it's got the three lines that we had written in the schedule. But what I've got to do now is give it amounts. Oh, you so you edit this? You have to edit these? Yeah, you have to. Yep, you've got to change it. So the expenses is five thousand. That's the total bill, right? But how it's got you got to tell it how it's going to distribute it amongst the different mm. destinations. Do you know if you um, would have had that allocation where you said it was twenty five, thirty five? You know, if it's percentages, it'll do it itself. Okay, got it. You only need to do this because it's uh, so you didn't you didn't have a ratio. Right. Exactly. So. The way to do this is this little button here, Adjust Distribution. Oh, okay. So you click on that. that. Okay, it loads the lines. And now I give it the, uh, hang on, there we go. 
and I'm going to say, okay, this is the destination is this subsidiary. It's going to go to this account because I on the schedule I specify the source account. I can change it here as well if I want. Uh, the destination location is going to that location. Um, and if I would have specified other things there, it would also it would have hit that as well. All right, so I can say, well, I want 200 to go here. Okay, and you can you can look up here at the header. It tells you as left. you go along, it tells you how much is left, and it's got a total 100 percent. Now I've got 3,800 left. Let's try 3,900 to see what it looks like if I try. It gives me the error. Mm -hmm. Total distribution amount for each line expense must equal to line total round off difference is 100. It tells me how much I'm off by. Okay, so that's good. Um, 3,800 and submit. Refresh the page. When it's generating something, it tells you this. So, you know, you kind of have to wait till it finishes running. Mm -hmm. But you can see there's no journal generated yet because this bill is still unapproved, hasn't posted yet. Now I'm going to approve this. I, I get to go to the script one. page. Now we're good. Okay, now the in progress tick box is off and we've got a link to the journal entry. Okay, so it's an intercompany journal entry, source subsidiaries. We've got the sub subsidiaries, it's hitting the intercompany accounts, taking the credit out of the office expense, it's putting it into the mm -hmm. destination. Um, it's got the names here, here are the intercompany vendors and customers. Mm -hmm. Let's play with the uh, allocation, see how you got okay. the adjust. Let's yep. see if and we can play see. with the in, in, intra. Yeah. Subsidiary, maybe to a sure. different account. Sure. Let's let's okay. Let's give it a different account. All right. Well, let's give it a different class too, just to make it exciting. That one's going to go to that class, and let's put this into something else. Postage, Postage. Let's say. Okay. This one will. Why don't we try this? Let's keep this in the same account and mm -hmm. give it a new location. I, I had okay. trouble with location. You know, what? let's give it a different department because location was troublesome for some reason. All right. This is good. Why, but let's do this marketing. And let's keep the other one where it is. A reverse current allocation journal and trigger to create a new allocation. Let's see what happens. Let's see if it actually right. does reverse it because here we're not touching the intercompany one. We're only trying to generate a new one. So let's see what happens. Refreshed itself. I saw it make changes when I when I edited uh, existing ones. Yeah, I can't, I can't even edit it if I wanted to. Let's try editing the one that was relevant though. The one that it actually had, had done before. Because naturally, if it's in the same sub, the idea is, well, just code it differently. Right, just break the lines out. Yeah, so the, it would, the real value yeah. is crossing the boundaries. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's still there. no, no, it's a different amount. It's thirty-seven. It no, you're right. Oh, so it did, it did actually update the link. Okay, so it didn't generate intra-company journal entries. Didn't try to reclassify that. That's thirty-eight hundred, and then you've got the reversal right here. Then it created this one, and reversed that one. That was triggered by the by the first edit we made. It looks to me like their architecture. Or, created a journal entry from that vendor bill out to a point or two of the record. So you're either going to get an intercompany one or a non-intercompany one. And I think right. You're, you're right. You're maybe not supposed to mix. But I got to do more testing to see that. Kind of like the idea behind it, but I'm not sure I prefer its implementation. Right. Here, I think you would use Sweet GL now to do allocations where you need more sophisticated stuff in the same sub. Then the question is, is how do you cross sub? Well, look, if you can edit the transaction, oh, the way they're thinking about it is the vendor bill could have been, we could be in a closed period and you need to adjust the allocation after the period's closed. Right, It'll, so that's why it wants to avoid it. It doesn't, doesn't just it update. Wants to avoid it in the current period and then constitute it again, right? Mm -hmm. That's yep. all it can do, right? It can't really go yeah. backwards in time, right? Yeah, so look at the comparison. So mm -hmm. what I found with allocation schedules that it's smooth functionality, I found it very easy to work with and clear. It's based on account balances, right? Which is what we discussed. It's not based on a specific transaction. I find it easy to learn. Mm -hmm. It's also more powerful. It's dynamic. You can base it on other things other than just percentage and amount. You also pre-specify, even if it is amount, it's pre-specified. You don't have to every month make a new decision of what the amounts are going to be. It does not support excluded lines. It's blind as to what is in the account. So it's whatever the account balance is. With some nuance, you can specify There's the nuance. dimensions, There's yeah, some nuance. dimensions and departments, yeah. classes, and it's, things like that. It's pretty powerful. It. We've gotten into situations where it was so gnarly, the allocations, that it ran, they, they, their NetSuite's tools ran out of capacity. Like they could only oh, go so well, deep. Your summary is very good here. I found that there were some defects. It's based on individual transactions. I found it difficult to learn. 
it's also it's a little two dimensional. It's either amount or percentage. You don't have that dynamic. And it does support sports line exclusion, supports changes to underlying transactions. To conclude, I've, I found allocation skills are more reliable. Personally, I would recommend where possible to use that if you can, if you're okay with account balances. Shared vendor bills is okay, but I would say proceed with caution. The setup has to be done right. I feel like it falls short of what it's trying to do. It's trying to, to yeah. come up with a different approach to allocation schedules when the approach is right so that you can see it on the bill, but I feel like it's 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 a little bit, tri it's tricky, you know, it's, it's yeah, kind of- I think it's a very good summary, and I know if we were to do it, we would do it differently.